Hello dear friends, welcome back to Top Lesson for you. Dear friends, as you know that we are discussing about the structure of the human eye. Now in this lecture, I am going to discuss some differences and the structure of the rods and cone cells which are present in your retina. Now if you can focus here, look carefully. This is, I am showing here, this is the retinal pigment epithelium as I have discussed in the previous lecture also and I will discuss in the next coming lectures also. Don't worry guys. This is the retinal pigment epithelium, right? The next or internal or anterior to the retinal pigment epithelium, you can see, you can see there are the receptor cells of the retina, right? The receptor, the photoreceptor cells of your retina and those are called the rods and cones, right? And next to rods and cones, there are the bipolar cells and next to bipolar cells, there are the ganglion cells. And from those ganglion cells, the fiber will come and come out through the optic disc and will go to the nervous system and will carry the image formed on the retina. Right? Now look carefully. Once again, I'm telling you, this is the retinal pigment epithelium, which is the deepest layer of your retina. The, the most superficial layer of your retina where the light falls is your ganglion layer and then comes to the bipolar cell then comes to your rods and cones here the rods and cones will be activated and they will uh, convert those chemical messages to action potential and will be carried by the bipolar cells to ganglion cells and from ganglion cells that action potential will be carried to your nervous system in the form of images right now let me make here a small diagram for example, these cells are your rods and cones, right? Here I have shown them. And behind the rods and cones, you know that there are your retinal pigment epithelium, right? So this is retinal pigment epithelium. And this is the rods, rods plus cones layer, right? And in front of the rods and cones, you know that there are located the bipolar cells. I will talk about, I will discuss all of them in detail, Rod, uh, the, the bipolar cells are present there and in front of the bipolar cell, the bipolar cells are connected to your ganglion cells like this, right? Now look carefully, look here, here is your vitreous body, for example, this is the, this is a very small part of the eye that I have taken and enlarged, this is vitreous body, then there is your lens and then there is your cornea now you just imagine this diagram look this is the light ray falls light ray falls on your cornea right then on your lens then on your vitreous body and then the light ray comes and does not activate these these ganglion cells and this light ray will enter and this light ray will not activate the bipolar cells and the light ray will enter and will come to your rods and cones and that light ray will activate those chemicals which are present in the outer segment of your rods and cones and from here now look carefully look carefully from here whenever these chemicals are activated these chemicals will generate a potential and that potential will be transferred to the bipolar cells and that bipolar cells will, will transfer that potential to the ganglion cells and from all these ganglion cells the fiber will go to your nervous system like this so all these are the fibers of your optic nerve like this now look carefully once again when light falls on the cornea then on the lens then on the vitreous body then it it pierces the light will not activate the superficial surfaces of your retina it will go deeper deeper and deeper into your retina and will generate and will activate the rods and cones and whenever the rods and cones are activated that current will not go back that current will when it came like this then the action potential which is generated by the rod whenever the rods and cones are activated that current will not go back that current will when it came like this then the action potential which is generated by the rods and cones that will flow in forward direction right so that will activate the bipolar cells then the bipolar cell will activate the ganglion cells 
and the current from the ganglion cells will be taken by the long fibers, long axon fibers of the ganglion cells towards your nervous system, towards the occipital lobe and there will be the image formation. So this is the mechanism through which the light is, uh, the, the action potential is produced in your retina and the image formation occurs. Now I am going to discuss these rods and cones, right? That what are these rods and cones let us see their structure first first of all then we will uh, then we will explain some differences between the rods and cones and then we will move further forward and we'll explain the the cells of the retina and we will explain the layers of the retina and that will be enough for us right so let's see the structure of the rods first first of all these uh, let me write here these are your rod cells right and these are our cone cells right why they are called cone cell because they have cone shape right they are like this so this is a conical shape so we say that uh, these are the cone cells and these are the rod cells why they are called rod cells because they are rod shape that's so simple look let us see some parts some important features of these rod cells for example i'm holding a rod cell in my hand now let me show you here my dear friends as you can see here this is called the outer segment right this is called the outer segment as i will show you here this is for example this is an epithelial cell the retinal pigment epithelium as i have shown here so these rod cells are connected with retinal pigment epithelium like this and so as the cone cells are connected right so these are the cilia of the retinal pigment epithelium through which they are connected and they exchange different substances with the, the retinal pigment epithelium and the rod cells right so this is a typical rod cell that i am holding in my hand i have made it now look carefully this is the outer segment now look as you can see this will be this retinal pigment epithelium then there is choroid then there is your sclera so this is outer part of the eye that's why we call this is the outer segment of your rod cell right so we say this is the outer segment little bit anatomy and little bit structure of it which is very important for us the outer segment then there is the outer cilia then there is the inner segment right so you can say this is also the inner segment or you can also say this is the inner segment this is the nuclear region and this is the synaptic region right and other some important points small small structure which are present here i will show you here in this diagram right so look carefully let me mention all the parts of this rods and cones for you guys first of all here from here up to here right this is the outer segment of your rod cell now let me write it here this is outer segment right in this outer segment of the rod you can see these are the some disc shaped substances which are present there and these discs are all of these discs are called the lamellae of rod cell or we say rod cell lamellae let me name it there these are called the rod cell lamellae right and these lamellae contain the discs right so what are these these are the discs and inside these discs what are present there inside these rod discs that chemical is present which is activated by the light ray and which will generate the action potential and will go to the nervous system so we say that this disc contain the rod chemicals and those are called the rhodopsin rhodopsin right so, done then outer segment rod lamellae discs inside the disc there are rhodopsin now look this black line that you can see uh, right let me show that here this black line around that rod cell as it is cell so it must have cell membrane right so this black line that you can see uh, right let me show that here 
this black line around that rod cell as it is a cell so it must have cell membrane right so this is the cytoplasmic membrane or we say cell membrane cytoplasmic membrane right okay so what did we discuss outer segment discs rod cell lamellae cytoplasmic membrane then this part you can see here this part right this part is the outer cilia right so let me mention it here this is your outer cilia right the connecting part between the outer segment and inner segment we call it outer cilium or cilia right then uh, from here look carefully some books say that from here up to here this is the outer segment and some books say that from here up to the end part this is your outer segment right so we will write it here as outer segment right and you can also say that this is your outer segment now if i draw a diagram here and i will show that outer segment only a big diagram for example this is your outer segment then this is the outer cilia and then this is uh, like this right okay and then it comes down again and then it is your inner cilium and this is the nuclear region right and this is the synaptic region like this so this is a typical rod now look we said that from here some books say up to here this is the outer segment outer segment or some books say that from here up to this point this is your outer segment right now look carefully here you have the discs right that i have shown there here you have the nucleus right inside all this there is your cytoplasm now this yellow color that i have shown here that represents your cytoplasm so let me uh, mention it uh, here this is the cytoplasm right now look carefully here in this outer segment if you call it from uh, this red line this is outer segment at in this outer segment here are the mitochondria present right here are lots of what present lots of mitochondria are present right and inner to this here are lots of endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes are i'm sorry golgi bodies are present right so here are lots of golgi bodies present right so this part where which is near to your outer segment yes of course this part which is near to the outer segment right and it contains lots of mitochondria this is called the ellipsoidal part ellipsoid part and this part right which contains lots of uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum and golgi bodies which is near to your nuclear region this is called the myoid part right now this structure is represented here right so we can divide this uh, like this now this inner part is your myoid part and this outer part is your ellipsoid part now let me mention it here this is ellipsoid part ellipsoid part right and this is myoid part i hope you can see it right so this myoid part contains lots of endoplasmic reticulum and this ellipsoid part contains lots of mitochondria right then we come little inner right and we say this part right the region between the outer segment and the nuclear region this is called the inner cilium for example here was outer cilium this is your inner cilium so this will be the outer cilium and this part is your inner cilium right now let me name it here inner cilium 
right inner to inner cilium this region inner cilium right inner to inner cilium this region which contains the nucleus right so this region is called the nuclear region nuclear region it contains the nucleus of the rod cell and then this last part right with which it is connected with the bipolar cells this is called the synaptic region synaptic region right friends so this was about the structure of the rod cell a little bit first of all let's fastly repeat rod cells are called rod cells because they are rod shaped and i will discuss the differences between them in the next lecture look carefully this is the outer segment right then from here to up to here this is the inner segment or you can also call this is the inner segment right this outer segment contains rod cell lamellae in which the discs are present and these discs contain the rhodopsin the chemical which is present in the rod cell which is, which will help to generate the action potential right then there is the black line represents the cytoplasmic membrane then there is cytoplasm and this is called the outer cilium then this is called inner segment this inner segment is divided into ellipsoid part and myoid part which i have shown here then there is the inner cilium and this is the nuclear region then this is the synaptic region right this was about the anatomy or some parts of your rod cell now let's come to cone cell now we'll show the differences don't you worry guys okay in my hand i am holding the cone cell right you can see the difference between rod cell and cone cell rod cells are rod shape and cone cell are cone shaped like this now look let us see the anatomy of this rod cell and cone cell also friends from here up to here or we will show it like this this is the outer segment outer segment right and this outer segment contains the rod cell lamellae as there were sorry as there were the rod cell lamellae it contains the cone cell lamellae right so these are the cone cell lamellae right and these cone cell lamellae contains the cone cell pigment and there are three types of pigments i will discuss later so this cone cell lamellae contains cone cell pigment right that are the three types of pigments rod cells have only one type of pigment and cone cells have three types of pigments right then from here we consider up to here this is the inner segment or you can also say that this part is your inner segment again we will say that this inner segment is divided into a uh, ellipsoid point ellipsoid part right and this will be the myoid part myoid part as it contains the endoplasmic reticulum and that endoplasmic reticulum is responsible to make these chemicals these pigments those proteins for these pigments so that's why we say this is the myoid part and ellipsoid part then here is your outer cilium this is the inner cilium right then from here up to here this is the nuclear region nuclear region right friends and this is your synaptic region synaptic region so these were some important points some important structural uh, markings of your rods and cones so we have billions and millions of rod rods and cones in our retina i will show you the differences between rods and cones see you that in the next lecture